Hi, Tom Cole, the coach for Steve Taylor Automotive Family, and it's um, an honor for me to introduce Joe Boyle. We had Joe on for Steve Taylor, a community star. Joe was magnificent. It was a great interview. It showed his, his energy, his pride, his desire to be the best teacher in Northwestern Ohio, which I really think he was. You're going to really enjoy this interview. It caught the essence of Joe Boyle. Hi, Tom Cooley, coach for Steve Taylor, community star. And, you know, I'm here with somebody that, you know, so many of you know in our community and certainly admire, um, Mr. Joe Boyle. Joe, thank you for being here. It's an Great honor to, to have here, you here. You know, for people, a few people that don't know, you're an incredible award-winning teacher, currently at Wade High School, making a difference every day, and an amazing author. You've got a five-set book that's going to be published with Yarko and the University of Toledo Press, and I know you're excited about that. Oh, yeah. I know Yarko's yeah. excited about that. But let's do the teaching thing first, Joe. Sure. Your enthusiasm for teaching, uh, I know what goes into that a little bit, and it's hard to maintain that energy, right? Oh, yeah. You've got kids that you know have needs from you every day. You have, you have a lot of kids sometimes that maybe mom and dad aren't at home. You become somewhat of a surrogate parent to them. Uh, they, you know, they bring you personal issues. Or they, you know, what should I do, Mr. Boyle, about this? Or what should I do about this? Or should I drop this class? Or should... You become much more than a teacher in, in many ways. How do you maintain that enthusiasm and that energy, Joe, that you have done? It's actually easy. It's part of what I have only now come to understand is my superpower. Okay. Um, which was not my super top power in 1989 when I was in your class as okay. a freshman getting straight C's. <laughs> um, so I was diagnosed with ADHD in 1991 okay. and very much interpreted that as an impediment to what I did and who I was. And the more I learned as an adult, one of the great things about ADHD is when you find the thing you love, you can't stop doing it. Okay. So you're a kid with ADHD, you love Legos. You are fixated on right. making the best Lego thing ever. And I got lucky enough that I found the job that is my pile of Legos. And I- That's am, a good analogy, I by have, the way, Joe, right. I love that. My and, pile of Legos. And a lot of I times like I'm leaving Legos around that people are stepping on and fussing <laughs> about. But um, I found that thing yeah. that keeps my little ADHD mind completely engaged all the time. And it's not just the history part, which I love, it's working with kids. I, it's it's fun. There are there are seasons to life every year. There's football season and homecoming season and basketball season and graduation season and, and you get to walk these kids through those those formative stages of life that we all look back on with you know, if not fondness all the time, we, yeah. we definitely look at them as, as formative experiences. No question. And, and you get to be that guy who helps them along and it's it's awesome. You know, Joe, you and I have had very similar shared experiences. We both went to St. John's. I had the privilege to have you in my class. And I'm a bad grader, so don't worry. <laughs> we can go back and change those to A's, Joe. Oh, no. That, shows, no. that shows you how smart I was. You get a brilliant teacher, I'm giving him C's. I'm not that smart. I've proven it day after oh, day. Come on. But we've had shared experiences. We both went to St. John's. We both taught at Wade. My first teaching experience was at Wade. So we benefited from all the men for others and the great things at St. John's. Would you carry that men for others? You know, I think that's also your superpower. But a lot of people don't know this, I think. They understand St. John's and the greatness that they bring in our community. I don't think they understand TPS. I taught at Wake. I met some of the best teachers and coaches and kids I ever met in my life. Currently working in a program where I'm helping TPS kids learn how to interview and use a microphone and be able to present themselves. I did started at Scott, or started at Start, Rogers, uh, over at Bowser now, we'll get to wait, it's on the list, and uh, the kids are great. Oh yeah. And I, and I, I think there's a misconception. Absolutely. That the kids at TPS and the teachers, the kids are great, and, and speak to that, Joe. Yeah, so what, one of the things, especially about Wade High School, like our neighborhood is what it's always been. Right. This is a neighborhood of working people. Correct. A lot of immigrants. Correct. Uh, people who have had not always the best go of it, but overcome all the time. And yes. that's what I love about being in the nickel, yes. is that this part of town, 
people want to say all the time, kids are different, kids are different today, right. kids are different. Kids are not different today. Joe, I agree. So I, I read back in the yearbooks as, yeah. I, as I've done, his, I run the archive room at Wayne High yeah. School, and you read back in the yearbooks from the 30s and 40s about the kids skipping class or the kids right. doing this, right. both the negative and the positive behaviors. Right. Human nature doesn't change. Right. It's, it's the same kids. We just get more worked up about it today yeah. when every kid basically wants the same thing. They, they want to feel comfortable in a community. They want to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. Yes. And our schools do a really good job of providing that opportunity for kids to be something part, be part of something bigger than themselves. You know, that's so well said, Joe. I noticed that when teaching today, uh, presently, kids haven't changed. And when you are authentic, when you are being who you are, you know, there's nothing fake, there's nothing phony. You're as authentic as a kid. <laughs> to a fault. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a very good thing. I think kids pick up on that. I think kids are like a lens and a camera. They see right through you. They see yeah. when you're up in front of them and you're talking, yeah. you're lecturing, they see right through you. They know what you are. They know that you, if they understand you care, they understand you're authentic and you're there to kind of inspire them, to lift them you're gonna get the best they've got. Now, the converse is also true. If they think you're faking or it's fake or you're oh, not there yeah. for the right reason, well, yeah. they'll come after you Absolutely. In, in, in a lot of different ways. Yep. But, you know, I get all the time, you know, kids aren't what they used to be. You know, I, I get so sick of hearing this. Yeah. So then I pause and say, you know what? I'll say, you know what? Gosh, you're right. They're not what they used to be. They're better. And, and I, I find them to be better. I agree with that completely. Um, where these kids are in understanding other people is so far beyond where kids were in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up. And I look at that, especially with special needs kids. Right. Those kids got picked on when we were in school. Right. And that doesn't happen that way today. And that's an they're amazing valued. statement. That's an amazing statement. It yeah, really is. They're valued parts of the school community yeah. today, as they should be. And, absolutely. and yeah, I absolutely think kids are, by, by the by, better at being part of society than, than yeah. we were. Yeah, and they, and they all just want an opportunity. And it's, it's kind of like the old coaching aphorism, I think, Joe. They don't care what you know until they know that yep. you do care about them. Once they know you care about them, they will go to the wall for you. Absolutely. They will do what you ask them to yep. do. And whether it's on an athletic field or in the classroom, and I think that's a, a commonality. Yeah. We've established you're a brilliant teacher and we applaud you. That's part of the reason that you're our community star today, Joe. And we're so proud of you. We're so proud of our teachers and our community. Teachers are everything. Coaches are everything. They make a difference every day. And we're so proud to have you here. But there's another side to Joe. There are many sides to Joe, but there's another <laughs> side. You're a, a tremendous author and you've got a series of books that are coming out down the road here with uh, the great University of Toledo Press. But tell the folks, what's the five set book uh, series about? The set is called Toledo's War, okay. and it's about Toledo's experience of World War II. When I started on this project, I, first of all, I can't even tell you when I started on it, because okay. I didn't start with the end in mind of a book. It started out as me researching some of the Toledoans who were killed in the Second World War, right. so my kids could do projects in class. Okay. And look then, up these folks and what they did and how they you right. know, were involved. Yeah. And so over time, I came to realize that I knew the stories of almost every one of the 1,100 Toledoans killed in the Second World War. Right. And then I realized I don't know many of the stories of the people who lived because I focused on the dead so much. Yes. So then I started reading every blade from 32 to 46 to try and get a picture of what it was like in this town. And uh, in 2016, I had a, a major health crisis, one of, one of several major health yes. crises. I, I remember rolling over to my wife in bed and saying, I can't believe that I know all this stuff about that era and it's going to die with me. And right. that was when I kind of realized, well, then you need to write this the down. The light switch went on and yeah. I'm going to write this down. And so I started writing it down just as something for somebody else to work with someday. Then I started kind of modifying it into a textbook for my class with the idea that you could learn everything about America's involvement in World War II yeah. simply through the lens of Toledo. And after I wrote a few chapters of that for my students, I realized this is actually a book. This is a big book about not what Toledo did in World War II, but how Toledo experienced World War II. Because a, a lot of local history books about a town in World War II, yeah. for example, you find a book about Cleveland in World War II, yeah. and it tells a couple stories about the steel mills, story about the Medal of Honor winner, token story about women and minorities at home, and that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't try to express the experience of people 
from that city going through the war. And so so this is really telling the war through Toledo's eyes instead of just telling Toledo's With, story. Without giving away, because the book set is gonna be great. Um, we were talking to Yarko off air, but maybe sometime in, you know, we were talking about maybe a month or two, somewhere Fingers in there. Fingers crossed. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll be press release and, and all Oh, that. yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so give me a couple of takeaways from, without giving the book away, but a couple of things that really shocked you about Toledoans in World War II. One of the things that's that I think is really worth talking about is that World War II has been the subject of a lot of mythology over the past 20 years or so, since, since Saving Private Ryan. It was the good war, that everybody was on the same page. And the fact is, not everybody was right. on the same page. And those are the stories that really fascinated me in this story. We often don't think about black history in Toledo until we think about the 60s and 70s. Right. We had an enormous black population by the 20s and 30s and 40s from the Great Migration. And the roles that black Toledoans played in the war and the discrimination they endured, and Toledoans at home trying to fight for equal housing and stuff during the war right. who were turned away, that shapes what happens after. That, that shapes the things that people think of as being the Toledo story, and they don't necessarily understand the roots of that. It's amazing, Joe, and you know this so well because you're such a great history teacher, but you know how concepts can be formed and shaped and put into books about history, and some of them are off. You know, just your point about, I, I think back to the American Revolutionary War, and people think, okay, well, these colonists revolted against the the, the British government, uh, unfair taxation, everybody knows that. And this was this major upheaval. The majority of the people, the colonists, did not want the revolution. Absolutely. They wanted yeah. to stay with the crown. Right. But in history, and kids are being taught, they're thinking all oh, the colonists rise up against the yeah. British government. It, yeah. it wasn't that way. Right. And, and it's interesting how, I think this is why you know, books like yours that are gonna give the real story. I, I always tried to, I tried to teach Vietnam. It's one of the most compli you know, oh, yeah, complicated, uh, oblique kind of, you're looking through this picture and it's so oblique. And I found a book, uh, Letters Home from Vietnam. And it's just what you've done with the World War II series. It was nothing but letters that had been collected from men and women who were in Vietnam and were serving and wrote home to their loved ones, to their parents, to their grandparents. The author collected them all and put them in a book. And I'm telling you, Joe, I read that book. I learned more about Vietnam than I ever learned in any textbook. And you're doing the same thing with your World War II series. I hope so. And, and I also want to say, you know, every history is really just moving the ball forward for the next person to run with. Yeah. Because there, there's stuff that will be discovered in right. the next 50 to 100 years that I don't know right now. Yes. Where somebody's going to look at my book as being an obsolete way of of looking at history. And I, I know that and I embrace it, right? Like my, my role was three yards in a cloud of dust on this book and somebody else gets it to, to take the, the next three yards. But you're such an open-minded guy. I, I love your approach because I know these books will be brilliant, but somebody somewhere will come up to you and say, hey, you know, when you wrote about this, I know that oh, isn't exactly, absolutely. and you are the kind of person that would say, oh my gosh, that's great. I embrace yes, it and yes. you know what? We'll fix it. There'll be uh, something we'll fix down the road, yes, you know? Yes, such is the nature of history that, yeah. that we can't possibly right. know everything that happened in the past. And, and I, am, I am quite sure uh, that there are plenty of instances in the book where I've got something wrong from the source. Like I did what was in the source material, but yes. that is, maybe that's not how the family remembers it or how the family experiences it. 100%. That's, that's the way history works. It's well, messy. Joe, well, Joe, let's tell the folks the name of the book again. It's Toledo's War. It's gonna be five installments. Five volumes, yep. Hopefully soon, maybe in a month or so, somewhere in We're that hoping. area, through the University of Toledo Press, yep. which is an incredible organization. Sure it are. gives local authors an opportunity to put out these brilliant works that wouldn't, wouldn't probably happen. You know, you yeah. get an opportunity to yep. put this out and. Uh, and I'm so happy for you. Thank you. You're a brilliant teacher, a great author. Always great and, to talk you know, to you're, you. You're an inspirational guy, Joe. I've said this to you a million times. So many people in our community draw inspiration for, from you for the way you live your life, the way you teach, uh, the way you write, and you're lifting people. And I don't know if there's anything more important than that. So thank, thank you, you for being a Steve Taylor community star. It's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you Thanks. so much for having me. Thanks, Joe. Tom Cole, the coach for Steve Taylor Community Star.